I am Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about the passive aggressive behavior. Now, this can be uh, maybe exhibited by a boss, a parent, a friend, coworker, and even a narcissist. So not all people with passive aggressive tendencies are narcissists, but this is a very narcissistic trait. Um, it's a manipulation tactic, and it can be used by pretty much anybody sometimes, but whether it's a teacher or a boss, doctor, coworker, loved ones, uh, you know, um, a lot of times we'll give the aggressor, you know, uh, I, I guess a pass on, on the way that they talk to us. And um, it, it, it's interesting how they'll do it. They'll do like backhand handed compliments. So let's say you bought a brand new house and you're all excited about it. And you're very proud of this accomplishment. And they're like, well, you know, that's nice for a starter home. And so you're proud of this thing. Now, all of a sudden you're like, oh, should I be ashamed? Uh, it's, it's a cut down. And, you know, if you have a, a brand new car that you're proud of and they're like, oh, that's nice. It's almost as great as your neighbors. And you're like, am I ever just going to be good enough is what we start to feel. Um, a backhanded compliment could be, you know, uh, that you have a beautiful dress. Uh, I wish I could wear that, but I'm too skinny. Um, saying that, you know, I wish I had a chunk or you have a chunky body style, so you can carry that off. But I have the uh, standard uh, model like figure. Uh, sometimes gifts that people give uh, can be insulting. Uh, you got to tread on um, careful waters with that. I know my grandma, uh, she had a kind heart and she gave one of my sisters like a Weight Watchers clipping. Um, and that like really hurt my sister. Uh, my grandma meant it with a, a kind heart, but sometimes people don't think it through. And that's where um, the lack of empathy to see how that would reflect, uh, have somebody feel. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, like my grandma had empathy, but this is where it gets tricky is it's kind of a manipulation tactic. She, she didn't want my sister to be heavy. So she gave her that. Um, but sometimes it, it, it's a touchy thing to where you can hurt somebody's feelings. So if you haven't been through that certain experience, you don't know what, what it's going to cause on somebody else. And that's also where the narcissist lies in their mind is uh, they don't, they don't have the empathy so they don't see how it's hurtful for some of the things that they're doing. And they don't care because they're like, what are you talking about? How would that hurt? Or um, I was only trying to help. And there's times when you help, there's times when you don't, but there's also when you have empathy. Uh, if let's say my grandma had gone through that situation, um, she could be like, yeah, that would hurt my feelings. That would make me eat more or cause me to be depressed or not want to go outside. She could empathize with it so sympathy and empathy are different sympathize is where you can kind of understand you know i can kind of understand that i haven't experienced it but yeah uh if i lived in a war tone war torn zone yeah that probably would kind of suck i probably would get scared but empathize is when you do go through that experience and you're like, like, I get it, like the shell shock and, and this and that and the food shortage and blood. And um, it's an actual relation to it as opposed to seeing from the outside in. So narcissists don't see from the outside, from, from their, from everybody's perspective whether it was something they understood because they shut that out and a lot of the stuff that we go through really does go back to our childhood and the way that we um talk to other people even just our our word choices um we can think that we're having a nice conversation like yeah that's a great car it's not quite as nice as your neighbors but that's great that you did that um and we're like, why do we say that? Why do we have to compare it to the neighbors? Sometimes it's like we felt compared to. Uh, it's these little tiny, tiny minuscule triggers that uh, help us choose our words. And sometimes uh, narcissists and passive aggressive people either do it on purpose or subconsciously. So, um, you know, even something like I could, I, I wish I could afford a new car like you have, but unfortunately all my money 
goes to student loans. And this could be something uh, kind of hurtful, especially if you're like 22 to 24 years old, uh, you finally get a new car and uh, the college kid is the one like saying, well, I'm the one who is so cursed to be so smart and having, you know, it, it's kind of like the poor pity me. Like I, I'm, I don't have the easy life like you do, but they're also saying, you know, it could be that I'm the smart one. Um, and, and it's just like the playing the victim, like our narcissist does. So uh, the victim is not always, you know, they they got beat near death when they were children. Um, it could just be, yeah, but I have a harder life than you do. Um, I have to pay student loans and you don't. So it's kind of like either getting sympathy for themselves or, uh, to take away your joy you know you're like look at my new car and they cut you down you're like okay um so and then you have to acknowledge them you know like i, I know you have a hard life or I, I was just showing you my car but yeah um i wish you didn't have to pay all those student loans like that's probably hard so the focus goes back onto that person and um you know little things like you know i i wish you would help uh you know clean up the the area but i know you're busy and that's not going to happen so we in those kind of comments they don't even get the person to say you know let me get to it uh somewhere around six o'clock when i'm done i'll be able to do it um they're already basically saying you're a piece of shit. you're not going to do it it's going to be an excuse that you're busy and they don't give you a chance uh you might fail you might do, <laughs> say the wrong thing but they don't give you a chance to say it they're already uh assuming who you are as a person and that's not fair to do and um you know so so with our narcissists we're they're they're projecting onto us probably what they would do they gave that little jab of that's not going to happen because the narcissist reflects on themselves like yeah if i was busy i wouldn't do it i'd rather go to sleep or feel overwhelmed um so they're putting themselves onto you and you don't get to live your own reality so these passive aggressive people have such a great manipulation skill and um you know it, it can happen to anybody uh and and anybody can use these techniques so um just like the narcissist somebody who's passive aggressive often plays the victim and so the uh, manipulation and the exploitation of a partner's goodwill um, is is often exploited. Uh, but what makes this confusing is it's uncommon for passive aggressives to speak openly and honestly about their actual feelings. So that's just like the narcissist, and they generally are not able to actually communicate their actual feelings openly openly and in a healthy way so um you know sometimes if if uh they say you're the only one who can help me um they're kind of bullying you into making it like they have no other option but me i have to do this and um you know the passive aggressives just like our narcissists uh can cut people out of their lives and uh you know um it, it, it's hurtful you know like if if it's like I, i'm sorry i can't help you and then they're like well obviously you don't care about me so why bother continuing this and you're like whoa like i do care about you i just you know i have my own life too and it's all centered around them and they'll cut you out it's like a light switch to them it's the weirdest thing that these kind of people especially narcissists will do it's like you get the fuck you light switch and then if they're like well i guess i'll try again maybe i need i need a ride today and they turn the light switch on they think about you when they need something and uh you know um they procrastinate they don't like to finish tasks um and they'll pretend not to know about certain deadlines they're like oh my gosh because they want either the team to pick up the slack and um a lot of them 
back out of a commitment at the very last minute. So they're unreliable and that causes havoc in our lives because we're trying to plan something. Um, and it's not even that big of a deal a lot of times, but just like, you know, can you get the groceries on the way home? Um, we, we're out of toilet paper. Not a big deal. Not a big deal, right? Uh, so we count on that and we're like, oh my gosh, if you would have just said that you weren't going to, I would have gone ahead and did it. There's such lack of healthy communication. They give us toxic communication where they give us like a promise and go back on it, um, you know, and just uh, being lazy uh, is, uh, it's weird. Uh, I've kind of done it. I live alone, so it's okay that I do it alone. Um, but I'm usually pretty good not doing it. But I've noticed like sometimes uh, when I'm like really depressed and not feeling in control of my life, there's times I'm like, you know, I, I, I make something on the counter and for food and then um, I eat and then I'm like, I should put that in the dishwasher. I should do that. I'm not going to. I'm like I should. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> it's like I played this game with myself, like I'm exerting control that I don't have to do that because I live alone. And, uh, you know, the narcissist does it all the time. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong when you live alone as long as it's not for too long. But um, it's, it's a power thing. And my like I was conscious of it doing it. It's like, what the heck is going on with me? Like my dishwasher is right there. And I just was doing an internal struggle. And that's that id and super ego. Um, you know, uh, the good versus the bad, the the um, stable person versus the unhealthy. And the narcissist struggles with that big time. So uh, narcissists, also passive aggressive people will exclude people. Uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, be on their team or you're not worth it. Uh, they can use isolation as a weapon. You know, if it's a, a work related thing, maybe now you're going to try harder at work or, you know, um, maybe you'll, I don't know, buy a pizza for yourself or lunch and then bring it to the other person like hey would you like some of this so uh, you start getting things because people want to be uh comfortable not necessarily even your friend but they want to be comfortable in their surroundings and just like us like when we tried so hard with our narcissist we just want to be comfortable and you know we do nice things because you know um that's how we grew up and uh, they take advantage of it. And by excluding people, um, they'll, you know, sometimes they'll purposely leave people out of a meeting. Uh, that person's going to be less informed. So if they're trying to get rid of somebody at work, it can cause them to mess up, uh, which wouldn't have been their fault if they were informed. So they can get left out of deadlines. Um, if the deadline was changed, they won't know about it and it's pretty much sabotage and they could ruin somebody's career they don't think about how that affects that person's family their finances their housing and narcissists just like passive aggressive people they'll keep score they don't like to let things go and um that's a lot of the black and white thinking to where you're either all good or all bad screw it there's no in between you you messed up you did me wrong one time and you're worthless now until I need you. So um, some examples, uh, you know, a passive aggressive person will exclude somebody from a house party just because they made a joke about you like months earlier, like uh, I'm a teacher, I don't know, like, uh, you know, she, uh, she, I don't even know, but something like, oh, if she was a real teacher, she would have known. Uh, and then some people are like, well, screw that. I'm not your friend anymore. Uh, you can't come to my wedding uh and it's like whoa i didn't realize i offended you i was i thought it was funny and now now you're not friends you know uh it wasn't meant to be hurtful but sometimes we don't think things through usually we can work through things but they'll hold some grudges they'll take it super personally um and it's weird i was at the beach today and um you know sometimes we don't know when we can say certain things um and uh 
I, I kind of don't want to get into a deep discussion about it, but there was a, a white guy walking with a, a black guy and the black guy was talking and he said, you know, the N word talking to the, um, the white guy, he's calling him the N word, uh, in, in, a with the letter a at the end, um, in a, in a joking, like, Hey, my man type thing. Um, but it's like, you know, they were buddies, but it's kind of like, when, when are we allowed to say it or can't we say it? And if you don't like it, why are you saying it? And, um, you know, it, it gets to where, you know, we walk on eggshells. Um, and it, the reason I brought that up is it's kind of like, if you're learning how to communicate, you're like, oh, you know, they were joking around, they were having a nice time. And then you're like, I didn't realize that was offensive, um, which I do. But, uh, you know, sometimes if, if you tell a certain joke, and you don't know, it's offensive, like a teacher joke would have hurt my feelings, and, and you didn't think it would, uh, you, you know, um, it gets so confusing how to how to make everybody happy. Um, it's just safer not to use the N word. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but they'll sabotage. They'll purposely uh, destroy things. I know with my narcissist, as soon as things went good, that's when we would break up. But uh, passive aggressive people can sabotage. Uh, you know. Um, your, your goals. So if you're trying to quit alcohol, um, you know, they might get a little jealous that you're being strong enough uh, because they struggle with uh, alcohol addiction. So they're going to kind of, you know, oh, just come on, just have a shot with me. Uh, I'll pay for it. And they're like, no, 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 he'll have a beer um, to where they kind of are trying to take control of your life to settle their jealousy. Um, and, you know, it's kind of sad when you're trying to stay sober, you're doing it either for your health, or maybe you got, um, I don't know, a drunk driving or, or you're trying to avoid that. Um, so either you're trying to keep up on your probation or, uh, you know, at least your willpower, you're trying to be strong and your friends shouldn't undermine that. Um, by sabotaging things, they can also spread false gossip. Narcissists will do that. That's where, uh, Sometimes they'll utilize flying monkeys to destroy your life so that everybody's on the narcissist side. You have no support system. And that's often, uh, you know, uh, because of jealousy is where that comes from. And they can sabotage things by withholding important information. Um, so uh, let's say, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, you your partner has a car payment and you have a mortgage. And uh, so they can either lie that they uh, have it covered, don't worry about it, but this, this week, can you help me with my car payment? Knowing that they can't help you with what you have. I had that happen to me where um, I lent a friend of mine. I said, I do, I have to have this back. Otherwise I'm gonna lose my house, like foreclosure. Cause this, is, this was in 2008 with a housing boom or crash. And uh, so I'm like, I really don't have it. I have to have this money. She has social security. So she's like, guaranteed I get that money. And uh, she just decided not to give it to me. And I foreclosed on my house. And um, yeah, still, still no money towards that. And I did that out of the kindness of my heart. So she won't lose all her family heirlooms. I lost my whole house. Um, and there's no remorse from her side. Like I lost my house because of it, you know? Um, so uh, they're often stubborn. They might say yes when they mean no or the opposite. Uh, so they might agree to have dinner with you and your coworkers, uh, knowing that they're going to cancel at the last minute. But they think in a sense, they're like, well, I'll just appease you. I'll just make you happy. And then they'll give you some excuse on why they can't be there when you would have been happier knowing that they wouldn't have showed up. Also, the people putting on the dinner, it might have a cost to them. And so they're screwing you over they're screwing the company or whoever's paying for the dinner over and it's just like whatever just get over it what it's just a stupid dinner i'm not even involved i don't even work there um you know or or sometimes this gets confusing and when uh they're like no i i really don't want to go out for my birthday dinner um but they really do or just you know mcdonald's is fine it can just be something simple and then they get mad they'll get mad 
and you're like, oh, I thought you didn't want to get all dressed up and drive all the way downtown. And I picked, I, I picked up some candles and McDonald's and I thought that's what you wanted. And then they'll throw it in your face. Like you should know better. It's my birthday. Um, you're like, How can I win? How can I win? You have to have information that's legitimate because you're following it. Uh, they're giving us lies to follow. So when we fail, this is why I keep telling you guys, it's not your fault. You did what they asked. And they love to push your buttons. And, and, and if you fail, uh, they'll give you the silent treatment. And that can include, you know, literally just not talking to you, just not talking to you or returning your text, emails or phone calls. Um, you know, uh, part of the silent treatment, too, is if you're talking to me, I can be scrolling through my phone where I'm very dismissive, not not partaking in the conversation, not acknowledging somebody when they pass by. And that can be hurtful, you know, um, a lot of narcissistic exes will do that. It's like you can't even like like uh, look at the person like you don't have to talk to them, but you can't even acknowledge them enough to just kind of like look and nod your head or something um they'll often be sarcastic sarcasm um can be hurtful like they say it's what is it 90 percent truth 10 or 90 percent sarcasm 10 percent truth so if i'm like oh shut up you fat ass uh just kidding you know i'm just kidding uh but you're like wait why would you pick that instead of a different insult so it's kind of like now i'm self-conscious and um you know little things like uh thank you for turning in uh your work uh but who wrote this uh a first grader um so it's like geez i spent all that time on it and like they really they didn't say a high schooler they bring it down to a first grader so they're in, in insulting um you know uh just little things like, um, you know, based on how well you take care of the house, it looks like you grew up in, uh, in a barn, like you don't know how to take care of a house and you're a wild animal. Um, it can be kind of hurtful where you're like, I just needed some understanding that, you know, we had three kids and I just went grocery shopping and I had to work late and then I got in a traffic jam picking the kids up from daycare and you're like, it's not that I'm not trying to clean up, clean the house. It's I'm overwhelmed, uh, and they don't see what's really going on. They'll just cut you down. They'll shift the responsibility onto you, often unfairly, and um, you know, just with those backhanded compliments. Um, and you know, uh, sometimes they'll insist that they're not angry when they really uh, seem to be upset. So you're like, how do I handle this? Um, you know, sometimes they can sulk around instead of telling you what's really wrong or what's making them unhappy. So you don't know what to do. You're like, you know, um, you're sulking and you're not communicating. Um, you don't know how long of a time to give them. Are they, are they sad that, uh, you know, they they finished off the toothpaste or are they sad that their mom died? Uh, it's like, what's going on? And, and they won't talk to you. You know, and you got to sit there and wait and you're walking on eggshells is now the right time to bring it up. Is it just going to blow over? And we don't even know how serious it was, you know, and. Uh, the, the, that silent treatment uh, is terrible and they do that so often when they're angry it's um, hurtful and sometimes you know they can appear stubborn. Um, because narcissists and uh, passive aggressive people when they're acting stubborn, it, it's a form of control. Uh, they're exerting power over us. They're not uh, compromising. And they'll often be just forgetful about things. So we start to wonder, you know, how important are we to these people if we're just forgotten about? You know, they take advantage of keeping up on their end of the bargain as far as the chores. Sometimes they'll intentionally uh, not do these chores um if, if they're upset with you it's kind of like oh well you you had to take off half a day for uh your doctor appointment and now we're 
I don't know, 70 bucks short on uh, our paycheck, your paycheck. So I, screw that. I'm not taking out the garbage this week, you know, because now we're $70 down because you had to go to the doctor. Um, you know, so it, it's it's sad how, how poor the communication is and how a lot of times they'll just skip important events. And eventually, uh, you know, a person with a passive aggressive behavior style, our nar narcissist will often stop going out with us. Um, you know, they, they won't want to uh, eat with us. They won't have dinner with us. Everything's going to start to separate. And that's why with this new supply, these are just patterns that start to happen. And, you know, uh, I, I know that um, I did a one video peek inside um, the, it's like the narcissist with the new sp supply. It's not pretty peek inside. I have some inside information on that, but I also have inside information on the other uh, narcissist that I was with. Um, we were supposed to get married and three weeks before we didn't call, he wanted to postpone it and it just fell apart. So he started dating this other girl and uh, she was 14 years younger, but she's asking me because I'm trying to talk to him and he wasn't home. So she's like, can I ask you something? Like, I can't remember exact words, but basically she was asking for my help for their relationship. And this was maybe in the first year they're living, you know, they were living together. Uh, they did get engaged. He bailed on her, but she's asking me, you know, and on top of it too, you know, uh, she was kind of a gold digger, um, because, uh, she was just talking about, uh, like her, I don't want to say names, but I think it was her first boyfriend. She, she was like, uh, like in, just about to graduate when they, oh no, she just did because it was over the summer. She just graduated. Um, but she was talking about her high school boyfriend saying that she's still in love with him, but she's living with my ex and they're getting engaged. Like people don't always, uh, end up with somebody for the right reason, you know? Uh, so when you're thinking about the new supply, we don't know. Uh, you know, we're comparing them to who we are and they could have all these different mental illnesses too. So we think that it's just gonna go in the narcissist's favor because they got this great person and we're a little jealous of it, but we don't know behind closed doors. Just like uh, I had that inside peek when she opened up to me asking for her help, for help. And I really kind of didn't give her very much to go off of. <laughs> I just said, you know, he, he's not going to marry you because he did that. Like he never married her, never married the next girl. And they were together for almost two decades. So um, how do you deal with this? You know, uh, you just have to be assertive, you know, um, you know, let, let them know, like, um, uh, you know, it seems that I, I, I'm requesting for your help and, uh, I'm, I'm upsetting you. Why is this upsetting you? You have to kind of get to the root of the problem. And that is so hard to do with a narcissist because they'll still be dismissive. Um, you know, just stick to the facts. Uh, if you if you have to work with people uh, that are passive aggressive, because in society, sometimes we do have to. So don't be judgmental, just be very to the fact. And, um, you know, uh, it, it, respond instead of react. And this is something that's so important. So often when um, we respond to a, a passive aggressive behavior, um, we have to do it without anger. We have to just um, kind of uh, nonchalant matter of a, a fact, as opposed to getting all our emotions worked up. And that's hard because by this time we're so frustrated. So just take a deep breath instead of lashing out um, because that reactive abuse, um, we escalate the problems too. And it is a reaction to them. It's us developing um, like a, a self-preservation, 
but it destroys the relationship as well as what the narcissist is doing. And um, it, it's a terrible balance with a narcissist because I don't want you guys to blame yourself that you did some reactive abuse. We have to survive. We have to cope. We try to talk about it. When we try to talk about it, they see it as a weakness or annoying. And that's why narcissism is so toxic. It leaves us so helpless um, because of all the lies. We don't even know what we're working with, but we have to be clear. We have to set our boundaries. If they don't uphold them, you know, uh, you know, we, we can't take them giving us excuses. Like you never told me that you wanted that done today when we're like, you know, um, you know, uh, write it, say, maybe even have them, you know, ask them, can you write this on the whiteboard right now that we need to call a repair or you need, you are going to call the repairman. So you, it's kind of like an agreement. Um, and we have to like understand where the behavior is coming from. What causes this passive aggressiveness? And it has to do with something, um, as far as, uh, whether when they were, a child, how they were punished for showing anger. And sometimes we have to understand that, uh, you know, um, we, we can try to uh, make things comfortable for people to where they don't feel punished um, because then they're going to react to things. And I had just watched um, uh, a video on some of the uh, English words uh that that people choose to say that are passive aggressive a lot of it can be in the workplace but you know people will say things like oh my gosh like i love how anybody can just wear anything uh you i've had that too because i used to mismatch uh but i did i pulled it off <laughs> but uh it's almost like um kind of like you're the crazy one or something um you know or um you know, that, that, that dress is nice. It's just not anything I would wear. It's kind of like, well, if it's nice, what? Uh, so the just little, little snippets of nastiness, um, and just cutting people down. Um, you know, like, uh, if somebody's helping you and then, uh, you know, we should be thankful they're helping. And that's like, oh, I guess I feel I asked too much of you and uh, kind of making them feel guilty for not giving more. It's, it's all manipulation tactics. And, you know, um, it, it, it can be hard to see when somebody's like, I feel like I asked too much from you. Um, our, re our response is, is to focus on them. Um, they're not really saying, I, I feel sorry that I'm burdening you as a genuine statement, they're saying like, why the heck is this so hard for you to help me? Um, it's all underhanded. And at, with, with our empathetic hearts, um, we're like, they're, they're kind of apologizing, but the way that they'll say it is not an apology. And the focus goes back onto them. It's so subtle sometimes and little things like, you know, I can explain it to you again, but you know, is that really going to help? Uh, where they're basically saying, geez, you're, you're pretty stupid. If I explain it over and over again, you're still not going to get it. Um, or how, how uh, if you say, you know, I'm sorry, could you say that again? And they're like, uh, for the uh, second time or for the third time. And you're like, like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Uh, whether you have hearing problems or um, you are trying to concentrate, but a lot of us are overwhelmed in life. Um, or, or you'll say something like, mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. As opposed to if it was so interesting, you don't have anything to say on it where it's like, just let's just end that conversation. Um, you know, so uh, a lot of times too, they'll be dismissive. Uh, they'll, they'll say, you know, as much as I uh, respect and appreciate your opinion, um, we're going to be moving forward with project a and it's like you respect and appreciate my opinion but you did nothing about it so are they really respecting that are they really appreciating it they were just completely dismissive 
Um, and that can start to affect how you react. It's like every time I try, like they're saying they're not or they're saying they appreciate it. So we're trying. Sometimes we might even try harder. Um, and then all of a sudden you're like, why am I doing this? And then you're going to start to change who you are, where you're like, screw this, screw this job. And I hate it here. Um, you know, or, or, uh, you know, underhanding comments like, you know, um, I don't know, let's say you're a, a baker and you're like, you know, I've been really uh, working on uh, this beautiful carrot cake and I thought of decorating it this way. And they're like, well, yeah, uh, carrot cake, but um, how, about, how about if you try something new? Kind of like you're going to fail um, and they don't even let you bring your project to fruition uh, without you starting to self-doubt. Like, why are they saying I should try something new what what's wrong um often they'll be like not to be rude but and they say that because they know what they're saying is rude um or i don't uh no offense but um where they they are seeing something in you that's causing them to feel that you would feel uh offended and they're going to say a statement about it. So let's say it's something about, I don't know, the dumb blonde type thing. And, uh, you know, um, if, if, if they didn't believe, I don't know, uh, where it's just, if you think it's going to offend me, don't say a shitty statement. Even if you believe <laughs> that blondes are dumb. <laughs> Did you notice I had a brain fry right there? <laughs> So, um, you know, uh, uh, even just, just the way they communicate is just horrendous. Uh, but I thought it was pretty interesting how the passive aggressive behavior are just little underhanded and things that people can say that can be really hurtful and over time is where it starts to wear at you. And it can go unnoticed for a long time because you're like, you know, they did say, you know, I, I respect your opinion. I appreciate that. And you're like, if you appreciated it, why aren't we talking about it? Why aren't we doing anything about it? Why, you know, um, or, or, or they'll give you false hopes. Like, we'll take that into consideration. Thank you. They're not taking it into consideration. You already know that. And we don't know what reality really is. Cause we're like, there could be that maybe they will. Um, Narcissists too will take credit for things. So if you had said, um, you know, I don't know, we got to put purple stripes in the parking lot. And then, uh, you know, the narcissist is in charge of the paint and they'll like, oh, I just thought that purple would stand out um, or whatever color. And you're like, but I suggested that. But the narcissist will reap the benefits of that was a great idea. Don't do purple. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> but um, great. Uh, I, I, just thought it was very interesting and one-on-ones are available please comment below and i'd love to have some topic requests i love helping you guys i'll see you in the next video